Hi, everybody. Welcome to AITA Pod. I'm Danny Vega, joined today by a lovely guest, Chani from Lafayette, Indiana. Chani, welcome to the program. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. Chani, I'm so excited because... You know, we were talking and I was like, who are you and what's your deal? And you're like, well, my son's dead. And you just said the darkest (laughs) shit right away. And I was like, this is going to be fun. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like I told you earlier, I'm very much open to talking about it now because infant death isn't talked about enough. But before we go to a dark town, I think that's obviously a trigger warning for anyone who finds the topic sensitive. Uh, You also told me you work at a call center. So tell me, you know, I I actually did this myself briefly. Uh, No, that's not true. It was it was over a year. I I, I was a call center boy. But but tell me, yeah, what's going down at your call center? Nightmare customers? What's the deal? Um, No, well, I work at a doctor's office, so it's more scheduling appointments. But we always get those like old people that want to talk forever. Oh, <laughs> because they're like uh, lonely. Chani, so can, like- can you just tell me a little bit, Chani? I, I, I got a story. I, I went out today and picked up the paper. Isn't that in something? Is that a story? <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much. And then we get those people that get mad about insurance. But I mean, I can't do anything about that. I get to push that off on other people, which is the best <laughs> part of the, of the job. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah, I mean, I was a surveyor, one who does surveys. I don't really think that's what a surveyor is. But anyway, that it wasn't a call. It wasn't a, we weren't trying to sell you nothing. We were just trying to get people to take surveys. That was our game. And I remember I probably told this story before, so don't crucify me, people. But I called this guy and I said, sir, uh, when, when the Time Warner cable representative came to your house, uh, what, what did he come to your house or was it just a phone call? And he was like, uh, um, uh, and then I hit the mute button and I looked to my coworker and I was like, this guy's a fucking idiot. And then I realized I didn't actually hit the mute button. And he was like, I I have to go. <laughs> Just hung up sadly. So I'm we a We definitely monster. have had some of those. <laughs> Oh, Chani, uh, can we just talk for a couple hours? I, I got nobody, Chani. Is that what they say? Do, 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 like, what kind of stories do they tell? No, they can just, like, you can just tell. Like, there's this one guy. I don't want to give too much information away because of HIPAA and everything. But he he was just, like, going on and on about his story. And then he's like, oh, I actually need to schedule for my wife. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I wasn't even for You him. couldn't have told me that, like, five minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been criticized for my treatment of old people still getting flack on Twitter because I, you know, said maybe cut grandma some slack. She's 85 calling a dress whorish. You know, I look, I think if if I can say something as a crowd pleaser, yeah, I I think I think we got to treat the old people with a little bit of a handicap. There we go. I don't know if that's politically correct, but, you know, they're they're old and shit, man. Cut them a break. They're bored. They, They might not have that many people in their life uh, I don't know how do you feel about this I mean like if I have time I'll sit there and talk to them for a little bit but if I have like a lot of calls and people keep calling then I have like have to kind of okay your appointment is at this time and <laughs> this day have a great day <laughs> But if I have time, I don't mind talking to them for a little bit. Well, that's very sweet of you. You're obviously a sweet person. uh, And thank you so much for supporting the podcast. You too could support the pod, get your own episode, just like Chani at the $25 tier. Chani, thank you so much. What what an honor. I'm 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 genuinely flattered that that you would support us at this level. So thank you so much. You're welcome. It's like I said, it's like my go to pod when I listen to stuff. So it's easy to listen to while I'm cleaning and stuff. Yeah, you were so cute about it. You're like, I do cheat on you guys. Guys, I listen to other pods. I was like, it's okay. We're not, we're not, you're not an adulterer. Don't worry. <laughs> well, guys, we got some juicy situations for you today. Chani does have a deceased offspring. So our second story of the day, AITA for cracking jokes about my dead son. Oh boy. But first, Chani, you mentioned you have lupus. So we're, we're doing some lupus stuff. We're going to learn about the loops. Here we go, people. AITA for accidentally revealing my grandson's lupus to his new boyfriend. My grandsons, Mason, 16, and Max, 14, have been living with me since my 
my son and his wife died in a car accident when they were 10 and 8. I'm fiercely protective of both boys because of the trauma they went through, losing their parents, especially Mason because he was diagnosed with lupus at 13. Kids his age didn't really understand it, so he was picked on quite a bit about his issues, especially after he wet the bed on an overnight field trip because it was messing with his kidneys. Oh no. Did you ever wet the bed from lupus? No, and that 13 is, I don't want to say lucky, but it's a really young age to get diagnosed, so that's... That is a good thing in the lupus community. Caught it early. OP goes on, as a consequence, he's very shy about it and doesn't really tell a lot of people unless they are close friends. Now, Mason runs track and a few meets ago, he made friends with this kid from another school. Oliver, we'll call him. And they've been hanging out for the last month or so. Sometimes when they'd be over hanging out, I noticed Oliver picking at him a bit about some of his lupus issues, like him being tired a lot or his rashes. And I would have said something then, but Mason could see that I was listening and waves me off. Okay, so Mason is like, please don't. Last Thursday, though, Mason confided in me that him and Oliver had started dating over the last two weeks. This being Mason's first relationship, I told him to invite Oliver over for dinner Friday night. Well, at dinner, we were having a good time and talking and Oliver was poking fun at Mason about hearing a rumor from some of his classmates that he wet the bed in the eighth grade and I could tell it was making Mason uncomfortable. I told Oliver to quit it. He apologized saying he was just kidding. And I got mad and told him it wasn't funny to laugh at someone with lupus about their symptoms. Oliver got the oh shit look on his face and profusely apologized. But Mason got up quietly and just went and locked himself in his room. Oliver went home and I tried talking to Mason to see what was up, but he just ignored me and stayed in his room all weekend sulking. Max finally tells me on Monday that Mason didn't feel comfortable yet telling Oliver about his lupus and I just outed him about it. I tried to talk to Mason that afternoon and explain that since he told me they were dating, I, I assumed he'd already told Oliver. And Mason gets upset and tells me that I should have asked first and embarrassed him. A-I-T-A. -A. Well, first of all, you shouldn't out anybody's medical conditions without their consent. HIPAA violation, Dad. Yes. And second of all, like, lupus is such a taboo thing that either, like, at least in my experience, I yeah. learned that people think it's, like, terminal and I'm going to die any second or that it's not a big deal and it's just, like, you have, like, allergies, which is definitely not true. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, help me understand because, you know, when I hear lupus, I think you have an annoying disease, um, but it's more serious than annoying. Is that, is that, I mean, I guess, does lupus shorten your life? Like, I, you know, I'm very ignorant. No, you're fine. I am also still learning. I got, yeah. I'm 29. Yeah. I know. I don't look like it. I know. You don't look a day <laughs> over 24. But I am um, I got diagnosed when I was 18. Yeah. But I had started having symptoms when I was younger. And it's just like every symptom I had, it was just they thought it was something else. Like I was tired. Well, I was in a lot of sports. So they were like, oh, you're just tired because you're in a lot of sports. Yeah. <laughs> and I got sick a lot. But it's like, oh, some kids just get sick a lot. Right. So what I finally got all those put together with a rheumatologist and he was like, no, this is something serious going on. And lupus is to go to backpedal. Right. Lupus is an autoimmune disorder. Right. And so it's chronic and there is no cure. Yeah. And my symptoms are very mild. I am very lucky. And like I said in the story, whatever his name was, he's very lucky too to have di get diagnosed early because they can treat it better from what I've learned if you diagnose it early. And so you you it's an autoimmune disorder so you're sickly is that fair to say is that something you're allowed to say yes Call it's basically sickly? in like very like stupid people terms it is your own body is attacking the organs and yeah in yourself and it, and, and, and it can have major organ involvement and will you live a shorter life probably or what what kind of issue is this really you can but like if this gets treated um, cause you even have to sometimes go through chemo. What? With lupus. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, you, the most com not common, the most common treatment, chemo treatment I found is methotrexate. I've gone through a couple doses my or rounds myself, but it, um, it doesn't, it can shorten your life depending on which organs are involved. So it's not necessarily yeah. that it's going to shorten your life because you have lupus. It's depending on what organs are involved and what, I don't want to say stage because it's not like cancer, but like what part of it they catch it at and how early they can catch it. Wow. And you caught it relatively late because it was at 18. No, I actually still caught it early. Oh, that's still considered um, early. Okay. I, um... I'm in a group for lupus on Facebook and a lot of those, it's mostly women that have it or like 
they catch it with. Yeah. And they're in their 40s when they first get diagnosed. 30s, 40s. So, so a lot of people with lupus, they just think, oh, I'm, I have fatigue and I'm sickly. Yeah, they just think they get sick more than normal people. Yeah. What, for the average person with lupus... It's obviously, I mean, it, the, on the far side, right? You said it's chemo, so it's fucking. It can be fucking horrible, but on the sort of lighter side, it seems like you're just getting sick more often. It, it can go undetected, so it's. I mean, would you say? Yeah, you are in a Facebook group, so this is a this is a big part of your life. Like, yeah, I guess I'm just not really grasping how big of an issue it really is for the average person. Um, I'll start with myself. Like, I just get really tired really easily. Mm. Like, I really have to play in my days. Like, you guys talked about the spoon theory in one of your episodes. It's like, really, you have to, like, know that you have, like, say this, when I wake up in the morning, I have 10 spoons. And if six of those are going to be used at work, then I only have four. So that means, yeah. like, maybe making dinner, otherwise I'm eating a Lunchable, and then taking a shower, going to bed. And that's, like, all I have the spoons for. Wow. Did we talk about the spoon theory? Who talked about the spoon theory? Sarah did. Like, I told you I binged the episodes. It's like a while ago. (laughs) I guess I forgot about it. (laughs) Um, The spoon theory is basically like you, when you wake up, you have a certain amount of spoons. Right. And then each activity requires a certain amount of spoons. So if I'm an, uh, you would say maybe, uh, you know, a quote unquote normal person has 10 spoons, maybe you only have six. Does that sound fair? Yeah, depending on the day. Depending on the day. Like, there's been days where I couldn't even, like, get out of bed. I just get up, maybe take a shower and change clothes, and then just watch TV all day. Wow. But some people, they're, like, hospitalized for months at a time. Oh, my God. Years. And it can go into remission. For me, that's been rarely. Yeah. (laughs) But for some others, there's not really, I guess what my point is, there's not really any average for lupus every person is so different right it's kind of like um i don't want to compare it to covid because it's not like that at all but it's like some people it's just like they have the flu like a bad flu and then some people obviously are dying from it (laughs) terrible terrible um yeah i mean going into the situation here and and thank you so much because now i will know i guess i'm coming to understanding you know this is a chronic condition it's a a huge pain in the ass you know, it, the, this sounds this sounds awful. So I'm sorry you have to go through this. Um, and I thought you actually stated a, a pretty reasonable principle, um, which is, you know, don't don't share anybody's personal medical information. I mean, let's face it. HIPAA is actually pretty reasonable. It's like, yo, don't go telling nobody this shit. Like, I, yeah, definitely. Because like and there's a, such a stigma around it because there's such un there's such under education about what it actually is yeah. like from house i guess it's not lupus <laughs> is a big thing and it's, so it makes it sound like it's such an awful disease but like people can live very full lives having lupus you just have to know your own body right but like when you tell people that they start treating you differently at least in my experience yeah tell me more about that because i my whole angle here was going to be you know this seems like such a childhood thing because like if someone told me they have lupus You know, I I don't know. I would from what I already knew, I I would be like, oh, you know, I'm sorry to hear. I wouldn't roast them. I you know, it's just like, yeah. So what are you encountering when you tell people you have lupus? At the very extreme, I've had people treat me like it's like I'm going to die at any second, (laughs) like I'm some fragile being. But like mostly people ask me what it is and then they're like, oh, you're just exaggerating. And I'm like, I'm not exaggerating. This is just what my life is people say that you should be lucky that you don't have it who would tell you that you're exaggerating i don't understand who what kind of monster (sighs) well like when i was younger my parents they'd be like you're just hypochondriac like there's not really anything wrong with you Mm. you're just making up this to go to the doctor but then my mom as i've gotten older she's like i feel so bad telling you all of that (laughs) so because you didn't know you had lupus at that point when your no, mom said it was that. just kind of yes it was small symptoms that but like none of the because my pediatrician would just be like it's this or you're low on iron right or, right 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 it's whatever um but then other people they just don't know enough about it so they just kind of change the subject which is fair that's probably <laughs> what i would really do yeah i mean i i think i think what you're you're not a parent right 
Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh, sorry. Wow. I didn't even mean to. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Didn't even mean to do that. Wow, people. <laughs> anyway, not anymore. Good God, Daniel. Um, the, the instinct of this parent to kind of defend his son, I think, is very understandable. You know, he's getting a lot of roasts here. Um, but I guess what I'm really curious to dig in, because, you know, frankly, I, I don't really blame the parent for taking this step. I, I think this could be a tough thing. And, you know, he's, you know, I'm sure getting uh, anxious and riled up, you know, hearing his son be made fun of for his chronic condition. That's horrible. Um, but I, I guess I'm just kind of shocked that, like, you know, people will make fun of this. And I, yeah, I don't know. Something about it isn't quite sitting right with me. Like, like yeah. Well, like I said, it's a lot of undereducation. Right. People don't know what it is. Just not, not enough people know enough about it. And if he's has kidney involvement at 13, that I have had no major organ involvement. Knock on wood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yet. So that can be pretty serious. And... I mean, his choice not to tell people, again, is his choice. But I just don't think it was her place to tell something about it. And, like, his brother, I think it was in the story. He's just a dick. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, like, no need to roast people about it. Like, my husband will joke around about, oh, you're just sleeping again. You're always sleeping. But, like, that's, like a safe place for us. Right, like, I right. know he's not saying it to be a dick. But now I think what I'm not understanding fully is why, why won't this kid just say, yeah, I got lupus. Like, I, I don't understand because he's going to get shitty reactions from people. Is that it? Like, I, I don't know. It's just not quite clicky with me. I'm, I'm feeling to grasp. No, you're fine. It's just, there's just such a stigma around it. It's kind of, and again, I don't want to compare it to mental illness, but like it's kind of the stigma around that. It's like, because if you have lupus, you literally could probably use it as an excuse for anything. Mm, okay. But um, it's such a stigma, especially younger, that it's like, oh, that's an old people's disease. Like young people don't get that. <laughs> when in reality, a lot of us, I feel like, start having symptoms when you're younger. Like I was talking about going to the doctor. Right, right. So he thinks that. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Well, no. So this kid thinks if he goes, oh, I have lupus, then that's just going to lead to more shit talk. And the kids are going to be like, that's for old people. I mean, essentially, in layman's terms, yes. Yeah. So there's a stigma and a shame around it. Yeah, I guess I'm just too detached from the grade school crowd, even though I act like an eighth grader, to understand because to me it feels like something i would wield like a weapon i mean that's what i would do i'd be like i have lupus you fucking bigot how dare you how dare you be mad at me for being late to work i have goddamn i would be pulling this thing out all the time but i guess in a schoolyard context it's just that kids will roast the shit out of you for literally anything and this is just ammo he doesn't want to give them well yeah that and like with especially with my lupus like again i'm going to say i'm not a professional on lupus i'm just going to yeah, my your experience, experience. <laughs> absolutely um is that like i could have go months and be fine be normal none of us are normal but normal right, right. i'm and certainly not <laughs> we all know this danny <laughs> 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 and um be fine and then all of a sudden just start going into a flare and having a terrible day right. or terrible weeks and then people are like oh you're just overworking your body i guess is one of the things i hear a lot right right it also yeah yeah people do that thing where it's like they, oh they have the answer they have the, of course they have the answer it's like oh you probably just need to sleep more like little shit like that is that is that grind your gears yeah. yes because i would come home i remember i was in marching band i know nerd in <laughs> high school and i would come home from practice and sleep like dead sleep dreaming sleep yeah. after practice right. and then wake up do my homework and go to bed like, that's what not what normal high schoolers do. Yeah, they're tired because they're in high right. school, but they're not like dead. That kind of tired. Right. Interesting. Well, I'm happy I learned so much here. But it's yeah, it's kind of a weirdly named disease also, if I can if I can say that. Yeah, there's like a big scientific name that I'm not going to try to embarrass myself by pronouncing on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 
just essentially it attacks your organs at some point. Like people, we can't be out in the sun a lot. There's certain foods we probably should avoid, but most of us don't. We shouldn't drink. We shouldn't smoke, even though like yeah. we basically, a lot of people say it's like cancer, which it's not because cancer is terrible and terminal a lot of the cases. And lupus is just like, you kind of have to maintain it until they find a cure, which they won't. So people should donate to the Lupus Foundation not a sponsorship and <laughs> to help us find a cure so that we can be somewhat, somewhat normal. None of us are normal. Yeah. I think, you know, I've actually run in, you know what? I, I have actually a friend who has a chronic illness and it, it's interesting because, you know, I'm looking here at the Wikipedia page and it's like, we don't know what causes lupus. So it's like pretty fucked up. We just don't even know what's going on. But I, I think one of the problems with this maybe in the adult world is there there's like real diseases. There's like all kinds of chronic things. But like there's also kind of diseases that are like a little bit more like not pseudoscience, but just not as like well defined and like rigorously documented. And then, of course, there are people who just will leverage like, oh, I have some kind of condition. And it's like, oh, it's not really that's not real. And so I feel like lupus uh, you know, victim sufferers get probably a lot of that flack, you know, that, that gets gelled in with these other like vague mental illnesses and, and things of this nature. Does that make sense? Like, all right. So like I was say, saying, we don't call ourselves victims. We, I would say sufferers because like it does fucking suck. But one of the things that it's like, we're called our, one of our symbols is a butterfly. Yeah. It's because no matter what, we try to stay beautiful. And I think that's awesome. I'm afraid of bear butterflies. But it's a whole different story for a different day. But like what, butterflies, because even though when we're struggling, like in our cocoon, we're still able to branch out and be beautiful no matter what we're doing. Yeah. Is that also connected to the butterfly rash? I just saw this on Wikipedia that that's a characteristic lupus rash or is it just coincidence? I have no idea. Like I said, I'm no expert. I'm still learning it stuff every single time myself. Wild. Well, going back to the stitch here, and thank you so much for sharing your experience. I've learned. I've grown. Um, I think we agree that, you know, the parent obviously had good intentions, but in the end, it, it's just like any other form of outing. It's simply not your place. And it was a boundary cross and you always have to err on the side of respecting that, that, that person's wishes and this parent let themselves got, get huffed. And for these reasons, I suspect we're on the same page. AITA for accidentally revealing my grandson's lupus to his new boyfriend. We agree. YTA. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Guys, please rate, review, and subscribe. Join us on Patreon. We'd really appreciate it. You don't have to support us as much as Chani, but damn, I would love that, folks. For a mere $5 a month, you can get over 120 bonus episodes, well, bi-weekly happy hours, the Discord. I mean, it's a whole community. People are making friends. It's, it's crazy. It's honestly out of my control now. It's become a superhuman entity, uh, the AITA community. Uh, it, it's is crazy. So join us, please. So here we go. AITA for cracking jokes about my dead son. Me, 37M, and my wife, 44F, have been together for almost 15 years, and our marriage was working fine until three years ago. We have two children, but sadly lost our eldest to a freak accident three years ago, which coincides with the marriage getting sour. We've heard of this before, folks. It was the most devastating thing to ever happen to both me and my wife and a rough chapter in our marriage. But with lots of therapy and deep and honest talks about our feelings, we made it through. I so desperately want to know how this kid died. OK, even though he is still missed dearly because he said freak accident, right? Like that's a tease. Chani, uh, is that not a tease? Are you are you losing your mind over this? Yeah, no, no I was totally like, OK, are they going to tell us? You know, did a fucking jet engine fall into his bedroom at night? Is this Donnie Darko? I need to know. OP goes on. Even though he still d missed dearly, life moved on and everyone found different ways to cope. My wife is religious and she likes to think it was God's plan to take him away from us. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> OK, I, I don't know if that's 
That's funny to me. I'm not religious either, so I don't really I mean, go that way. But What kind ahead. of God is this? He's, God's like, nah, that was my plan. I meant to, like, fuck with you. Like, what? That's my plan. So I took your son. Like, that's the plan. What? You're mad? I know my wife doesn't like it, so I avoid it as much as possible around her. Try to respect the way that she sees the death. My best friend is also the godfather of our eldest and close to me and wife. Sometimes the both of us go out to drink, talk about the old times. Occasionally, my dead son is brought up. And as much as I try to remember him as a happy child, he was. Sometimes I just get overwhelmed with the sadness. So I use the way that works best for me and joke about it. It makes me feel better, and he used to love my jokes, so I like to think he looks down on me and laughs about them, too. About two weeks ago, my friend unfortunately mentioned a few of the jokes to my wife. Why would you do that, mate? And she got very mad, called me an insensitive asshole that I never cared about my son and that I probably wanted him dead anyway and a lot of other nasty stuff. Now she's completely ignoring me, won't talk to me, and isn't okay with talking to our therapist either. I would have never joked about him when she's around, but I feel entitled to cope in my way, and that and that is my humor. I never wanted to make her feel disrespected or that I don't care about my son, but I feel like I have every right to cope just as much as she does. A-I-T-A. I mean, like we talked about earlier, I joke around about my son's death. Um, my husband has cracked a few jokes as well. It's just... Like he said, it's a coping yeah. mechanism that I use. Like people, and it totally depends on the type of people that are asking me. Because if it's just like somebody in the grocery store and like, do you have any kids? They'll be like, yeah, I have one. Like, and then the conversation over, they don't really ask any more right, questions. Right. But if they keep digging in and are like, well, how old? Do I, how old is he? <laughs> I was, and I'll say he would be five, and they're oh, like, shit, oh, would be. And I was like, yeah, he passed oh, away. Shit. And I have, like, pictures up at work, and they'll be like, oh, is that your son? I'll be like, yeah. They're like, oh, he's really young. You're already back at work. And I'm like, well, yeah, he's dead. (laughs) Oh, my God. Sort of thing. So it really, for me, it depends on the the crowd. Right. (laughs) I'm no comedian, but I definitely tried my best to read the room. What kind of jokes do you make? Um, well, it, it really, like... Like we talked earlier, I'm a huge Always Sunny fan, so people will be like, oh, do you have any kids? And they'll be like, nah, not anymore. <laughs> and then just kind of leave it at that. Or I'll say stuff like, oh, he decided he didn't want us as his parents anymore. That's funny. I like that. Um, Just stuff like that, because it's like, if I wasn't making jokes, I'd be crying, and I don't want to be crying all the time, even though obviously he's the best thing that ever happened to me. I would give anything to be pregnant with him again, even though that was the most miserable experience. Aww, that's so sweet. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think, I think we've talked about having a dead child specifically being pretty much the worst thing that can happen to a person, you know, maybe short of being tortured for years, but like, it really is, I think, considered by many people to be like, yeah, the worst, the worst possible thing. I mean, I I think most parents say I'd rather be dead. No, I know. I spent like years after his death being like, why couldn't it have been me? Why couldn't it have been my husband? (laughs) Even. (laughs) He's going to love me for that one. Why not this fucking guy? (laughs) But it's like he had so much life to live. And like we had like, I mean, I won't say we lived our life because I was I was 24 when I got pregnant, 25 when I had him. Yeah. And I'm almost 30 now. So it's just like I had lived so much life. And he couldn't be there for that. Yeah. No, it's, it's. Oh, so he is just like, he brought so much joy to our lives. But it's like now I feel like, cause it like right after he died, people were just wanting to know how he died and stuff, which I'm pretty open about, as you know, from earlier. Yeah. And now it's just like, I feel like people are being nosy more than they are wanting to actually give us support. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I feel like I was being nosy. Do you do you want to tell people? So, because I know they're wondering, but what whatever you want to do. Oh yeah, I'll, I like I said, it's um from bed sharing. We were sharing bed with them, and he asphyxiated in his mm-hmm. sleep. Um, a lot of parents do bed share, so I'm not, and it's a hot topic with yeah. parents. So I'm not going to sit here and preach to you yeah. guys. But that is how he died, and I regret it every single day. I wish I could have done something different. I wish I did something different that night. Would you? I can't, and now the best thing I have to do is 
tell people about it. And you and you previously told me that, you know, he is fixated on his own saliva. So you I guess the bed sharing thing, is that connected at all to this? Because, I mean, you were right there. You couldn't have been closer, really. Like, had he been in a cradle or whatever? Well, that night... I had asked my husband to bring me his sleeper. It's like was like a cot thing that connects to our bed. But we had it on the couch because I lay on the couch and watched TV yeah. with him. He didn't care, but whatever. He was one month old. Yeah. <laughs> and by the time my husband got back, he was like, oh, you guys just look so peaceful. And he didn't move him. So there was just like a lot going on. And... I wanted to be mad at my husband for the longest time, yeah. but now I can't because if I was him, I probably would have done the same thing. So in, in theory, the the sleeper could have helped with this. Um, In my specific position, yes. Interesting. Well, I'm so sorry. And, you know, I, you know, I don't really know anything about this topic, you know, beyond the fact that I know I don't want nobody to touch me when I'm sleeping. So <laughs> I'm probably anti-bed sharing just because... Frankly, I don't even know if I want my I want a king size bed so that they can be as really far from me as possible. You know, I don't want nobody to touch me, to yank on my blankets, just nothing. I don't want to hear anybody breathing, nothing. But, you know, I'm sure it's very um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's very hospitable and warm and, and cuddly and, and wonderful for, for the infant. So I, I can definitely see the two sides of it just from from that. Oh, yeah, definitely. For sure. Like. It was like he looked exactly like me. If you put pictures up on the pod or yeah. I can show share some on the Patreon, yeah. like he was my twin. And it was just like one night we made the decision and my husband made a split second decision. And it's taken me a lot of therapy yeah. to realize that it wasn't my fault. Uh, that it could have happened just as easily if he was in his sleeper. And I might That's cry. Okay. So. Well, yeah, absolutely. Feel free. My mm -hmm. mom, she always tells me, at least he died next to the person that he loved the most. Yeah. And that has brought me a lot of peace. And this has also taken me from religion. I don't really believe in, I would say more agnostic if I had to put a label on it for the sure. crowd. Um. But it's taken me a lot of therapy to get to where I am towards to be able to even do this podcast. Well, I'm so proud of you. And, you know, I think it's so important that, uh, you know, people have reached out, you know, and I, I love that we talk about therapy on here and people understand that, you know, it's it's a healthy thing to do and it's a proactive thing to do. And, you know, thanks for sharing with everyone this this thing you went through, I, I think we all go through things where we, we blame ourselves and we rake ourselves through the coals and, you know, it, it has to be processed and it has to be worked out. So thank you for sharing your story. Oh, no problem. If I can reach at least just one person through doing this, which is probably my whole goal of doing this, and they can, plugging my blog, <laughs> they can follow me on there. Um, I go through a lot of my journey through self-discovery on there and it, it, I haven't quite talked about Wyatt yet. That is his name. His name was Wyatt, but I'm getting there. Well, I, I, I think it's important. And, you know, I think when you're ready, I, I think being honest about our experiences and, you know, being open about our humanity is, uh, is highly meaningful. You know, I, I never foresaw that this podcast would bring me so much meaning. And, and I think that, and I urge you and we will link to your blog, of course, because I think, you know, we're all like, Oh, content and Instagram reels, man. But in the end, you know, the power of content, it could be blogging, it could be pods, it could be whatever, you know, is that it connects us with people who have similar experiences and we can find, you know, the universal shit that unites us all. And so I, I'm really proud of you. Oh, I'm crying now. I don't even know why. <laughs> I made you cry. That was my goal. You got me there. I but, thought it would probably, I thought it'd be closer to the, <laughs> the, uh, deceased offspring, but I guess it was the power of content that made me cry. So I'm officially corny as fuck, but <laughs> no, it, it's, it's an awesome thing you're doing. And, um, 
you know, it's, it's a great thing. And, and I'm sure as you, you grow in your journey, you, you really will find a tremendous amount of healing power and, you know, and talking to other people, cause you know, this, this happens, this happens to lots of people and the internet helps us, you know, connect with people. So who people, wow, we went somewhere, but back to the situation, I think he is not the asshole. Yeah. I mean, it, it really does seem like, right. Everyone has their right to cope however they want and and you know i think making jokes is uh is obviously something i'm a big fan of so it makes sense to me you're making jokes sometimes it's it's awkward but it's kind of like it can free the other person up to know you're not like touchy about it and it's something you're you're willing to go there you know when you say something like and it helps people know that like everyone grieves differently yeah yeah, I mean, if anything, I might ding this friend because I think he was being inept. You know, we spoke about having the common sense to not disclose someone's medical condition to understand that or outing people in any kind of way. Likewise, you know, if someone's making jokes that are pretty intense about something very personal, why would you go run and tell wife? Like, that's just not something she needs to know. Yeah, because me and my husband grieved very differently, not to get into a long winded thing. But, like, we grew very differently, and we had to even do couples therapy to kind of get on the same page about how I grieve versus how yeah. he grieves. And that friend was, like, way out of line. So I guess if we had to say, I would say no assholes here between the husband and the wife and the friend is the asshole. Yeah, I think I think the the friend and and you know whenever you're talking to someone who's married you gotta you know you gotta have an awareness that even though they probably tell their wife everything you gotta just err on the side of caution with that you know you, you never know especially with something as touchy as this you gotta just be careful definitely i agree with that i think we're on the same page here aita for cracking jokes about my dead son no assholes here in terms of husband and wife we're throwing a ding at this guy's friend shut up jerry she didn't need to know that bro what are you doing <laughs> guys please rate review subscribe join us on patreon it feels weird to go into like an ad voice after all that but guys we're gonna wrap up here on a lighter note let's all take a deep breath because we're going to a different zone folks we're going to a zone of lightheartedness. Forget about everything. Don't forget about every. OK, forget it. Enough with the preamble. Here we go. AITA for asking my husband to carry me on the way back from a hike. What? You did what? I went on a hike with my husband and a group of his friends. On the way back, I asked my husband to carry me the rest of the way. He was having a conversation with three of his friends when I asked, but they went quiet after I interrupted. I told them they could keep talking and ignore me, but one of the women told me their convo was private and that he shouldn't have come if I couldn't handle it, even though she and the others had asked more than once if the group could take a break. So I was obviously not the only one struggling. It was super awkward since she was obviously annoyed by me, but also continued walking next to us. A few other spouses asked to be carried and it caused some arguments when they were told no. And she made a comment about how it was my fault. My husband told her to stop and then made a joke about his friends being too weak to carry their spouses, which caused some of them to try. This ended up slowing the whole group down and the woman kept making indirect comments, blaming me for ruining the hike. A-I-T-A. <laughs> well... <laughs> My husband is an outdoors person. He loves to be outdoors. I don't like outside. I don't. Okay, so I like being outside, but when there's no bugs, which is never. So I don't <laughs> like being outside. <laughs> um, and I guess for me, my situation is different. Again, going back to lupus is sometimes I just get extra tired and don't realize I'm going to get extra tired. But it's like, I don't think that she's wrong for asking him if we're doing literal, but like they're having a private conversation. Was she the only one out of the conversation? Yeah. That's what I'm confused about. Like, are, was she the only one not in the conversation? Yeah, we're having a very private, heavy, serious conversation as we descend a mountain. Okay. What, what do you do? Like, I get nature can make people all like spiritual and shit, but it's so weird. <laughs> Like, if you're the only one out, then they're obviously talking about you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I think that's a good read. And then they got all huffy and kept picking on her. It's like it's completely ridiculous. I mean, I guess I would say and maybe I'm wrong here, but how small are these spouses? I, I mean, this seems extremely dangerous to be carried down a mountain. I, I think I would push back on 
on this request heavily. I'd be like, even if I could carry my spouse, which I've never been strong enough nor dated someone small enough. No, I've never dated someone who weighs 45 pounds, the max I could carry for five minutes. Um, this just seems so, you know, and then you're occupying someone's hand. So if they fall flat, you know, if they fall face first, then it's like, great. Now two people just got seriously injured. So this seems like a bad idea. Uh, generally speaking, but it doesn't really seem like OP did anything but maybe make a ridiculous request. And it sounds like one of these freaking ladies was like, we are doing the hike. There's no breaks. There's no rests. We are going down the mountain in one fell swoop. And that's that. Yeah, because I weigh about the same as my husband. So if I asked him, he would look at me and then just roll me down the mountain. <laughs> he would not even be like, entertain the idea of carrying me. But at the same time, it's like I'm still stuck on like how they were all having a, such a serious conversation that that one wife was not right, allowed to right. be in. What literally what are you guys talking about? What's going on? Reddit user 098123 writes, what kind of uninjured adult asks their spouse to carry them? Yes, YTA. Asking them to slow down or take a break would have been fine. I just can't fathom how this is even a serious question. I mean, I would ask him, but I know the answer yeah, would why? be no. I don't think she's like such a dick. No, for why asking. would that make you an asshole to ask a ridiculous question? I mean, to your spouse? I mean, maybe if you ask like an acquaintance and made it awkward because people are like, what? But like, how would that make you an asshole to ask a ridiculous question? Uh, you know, that's ridiculous. But judging by like how they were, I feel like they'd still be dicks if she asked to like slow down. Yeah, for a and then nobody wants to slow down. I mean, give me a break. Toxic Madness 44 writes. YTA, the woman is right. You shouldn't have gone on the hike if you couldn't have handled it. Shut the fuck up. See, this is when people it's like, no, if you're going on a hike with friends, I think there's a reasonable expectation that the hike will not be a gung ho, you know, fucking I did a rod. Can we calm the hell down? And yes, I know that reference didn't exactly work, but you get it. It's an epic sort of journey. Like, give me a break. Are we friends going on a friendly hike or are we scaling goddamn Everest, you know? Exactly. Like, so I feel like people that are like, oh, we're just going on a light hike are actually because my brother and sister in law, they they are like, let's go on a hike. And they're like literally hiking a mountain. They live in New Mexico. They're yeah. like literally hiking a mountain. Whereas me, a light hike is like maybe a slight incline up a local park. Right. There's like you have to know the know the crowd. Like we talked about earlier, know, know the, the crowd. crowd, read the room. If you're big hiker vibes and you're like crazy and you got like crampons and you got a sherp on speed dial then you just need to realize that most people are not that. And that's a preface. And you go, listen, if you're going to go on this hike with me, I just want to warn you, I'm not going to slow down. I'm I'm the person I like hike the shit out of the mountain. That's fine. But like that's on the hikers. That's on the crazy, maniacal people who's hiking as a personality. That's not on your friend who agreed to go on a hike. Especially if you, I don't know, like, obviously we don't know if this wife was a big hiker or not. But if you know that friend's not a hiker, like, why are you doing something you exactly. know Exactly. I'm, I'm reading Reddit's response here. I'm seeing a lot of YTAs. I think it's sexist. They're just trying to hate on a woman. Shut the fuck up. She asked a question. She asked a ridiculous question. She was told no. And the question was reflective of the fact that apparently this hike was, you know, maniacally like, we must go, we must go, we must get the medicine to the village. Well, there is no medicine, there is no village, so can we please just enjoy ourselves? Exactly, they're not in Stranger Things <laughs> trying to get the medicine to bleep spoiler. Oh boy, I but, don't know what you just spoiled, hopefully no one's getting mad at me. No, there's not really any medicine, So, but it was just, uh, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Okay, I mean, so it was super awkward, she was annoyed. Where was this part? The 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 key the key thing here, I'm going to hinge it all on this. I couldn't handle it, even though she and others had asked more than once if the group could take a break. So clearly, whoever was running this hike, for some reason, had authority, was like dead set on doing it a certain way. And, and for these reasons, I, I think we're going to be on the same peach here, Chani. AITA for asking my husband to carry me on the way back, way back from a hike. I think we agree. NTA and this maniacal hike running lady is. Yeah, for sure, because it's like she asked him to carry him. He said no. And then she, she asked for a break, if I'm remembering the story right. And there she's just like, no, this is how yeah, we have to do it. That's what she said. 
She was uh, she was getting annoyed, probably talking shit about OP. And then, you know, she's dead set on this ridiculous hike. This is on you, the, the pro hikers. You know, I, I went on a hike with a couple buddies and one of my friends got really winded and really tired. And yeah, of course, I was annoyed because, you know, I'm in terrible shape, but I was in better shape than him. So I also kind of felt better about myself. Actually, I would say net. I wasn't annoyed because I was like, yo, I'm in great shape compared to this MF. Shout out to Lucas. I love you, bro. The thing is, I think that is on. If you're going to if you're going to do any sport like super seriously, then you got to warn the newbies that you're involving. I, I think that's a rule that, that doesn't fall on them. 